Hey everybody, Jen here of Gen X Website Design and Strategy. The objective of your website, and especially your blog, is to captivate your visitors with engaging content that makes them want to hang out for a bit. This means giving them a reason to stay on your website longer. So where do your blog post images come into play here? They too need to offer value and or contribute to the overall message of your blog post. In this video, I reveal the Gen X approach to choosing blog post images, which often differs from conventional wisdom, and examples that will help you utilize images to improve your blog posts and engage website visitors. First of all, don't think of images for your blog posts as fillers. They are part of the content and should enhance your blog posts. They need to be applicable to the context of the blog post and or provide value to your readers. Remember, all your readers care about is what's in it for them. So family photos are a hard no. The images you choose need to illustrate the point you are trying to make in your blog post while offering value at the same time. The featured image is the one that appears on your blog page, accompanying the title and the excerpt if you decide to display the excerpt on your blog page. This image could also be used in the context of your blog post. I typically put it at the top for my clients and it may not offer value, but it should illustrate the point of the blog post because people will associate it with the blog post and it may help them remember the post, i.e. you. For example, I see wellness coaches do this a lot. They may write a post about meditation or well-being and they use images of nature to accompany their blog posts. They're lovely images, but they don't illustrate the point. Does that make sense? If they really want to include pictures of nature, something like this makes a lot more sense, especially if their blog post talks about meditating in nature, forest bathing, or something like that. You can also use graphics for your featured image. Personally, I don't include my graphics in the context of my blog posts, but you could. Canva is awesome for this, I suggest doing a search for an Instagram template, either portrait or square is fine, and starting out with one of their suggested designs to create your own. Get yourself some templates for your blog post graphics and this task could get a whole lot easier. You can even purchase templates from Creative Market, love that website, to create your own. I searched blog post templates, but I think any of these will work. Instagram post templates for Canva, Pinterest templates for bloggers, et cetera, et cetera. And you can just use these for your featured images and bonus, repurpose them for Instagram and social media. The possible downside to this is that templates are redundant and may not illustrate a point unless there's a designated section of your template, this, 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 where you can include an image or a graphic that speaks to the message of your blog posts. And that's what I recommend doing if you're going to go this route. Sort of like my Pinterest images that appear at the bottom of my sidebar in every one of my blog posts. There's a place where I can actually include an image that aligns with what I'm talking about in my blog post. Does that make sense? These images walk your visitors step-by-step -step through a process. Essentially, these are tutorials. These images are always created by you and they need to be super clear with arrows pointing, elements circled, and be associated with steps in the process you're describing. All of this said, don't go too crazy here. You may even be able to consolidate and use one image for two or more steps. If I'm being honest, I stopped doing this almost completely myself because I have YouTube tutorials showing people exactly how to do stuff, and it was feeling like I was reinventing the wheel. Not to mention, I really want people to go to my YouTube channel. So I direct them there when things get complicated, and I just number the steps in the blog post. If you have a YouTube channel like I do, use your judgment here. If your instructions are complicated, that means your images will be complicated too. And if there's one thing I've learned, complicated causes website visitors to bounce. Keep the number of steps to a minimum, consolidating steps when you can, and keep these images to a minimum too without confusing your visitors. A good infographic is worth a thousand words. If you are good at creating these, do it. I love infographics and I wish I was better at whipping these things up. 
Most of us are visual learners. So having an infographic that visually depicts a message has huge value. I have one infographic on my entire blog that I created in Canva, and I have to say, I'm quite proud of it. You can find it in this blog post and scroll down. I went one step further with this infographic and enabled my visitors to download it, and I encouraged them to print it out and hang it in their work area as a reminder. I put my brand logo and website address on it. So if anyone actually does print this thing out and hang it where they spend hours of their time every day, it will serve as a constant reminder of my business and my brand. You heard me correctly. These are also images and they not only help break up the text on your page, but they offer a ton of value to your readers. Plus they have the added benefit of growing your email list, which as we all know is very important. In fact, in most of my blog posts, the only images I include are the image attached to my YouTube video and these lead generator images. Sometimes you have to show people examples of what you're talking about. For example, before and after photos, or maybe you're trying to show someone how to locate the pressure gauge on their well pump. That was totally random. Maybe you have a fashion blog or you're a dressmaker, or you want to show someone what a tip bite looks like. I know, totally random again. This is how my brain works. When including visuals is essential, well, include them. It's kind of a no-brainer. But again, don't go crazy. Most of the time, you only need one. If you're showing examples of your work, keep it to a minimum. Too much scrolling annoys visitors, and having a lot of images, especially if they're high-quality images, will cause loading time to slow way down and negatively affect SEO. In other words, an image that evokes a feeling you want associated with the blog post slash your business. These can actually be quite powerful. Whatever the message is you're trying to get across, you can often accomplish this with an image that communicates a specific feeling. I put GIFs in this category because they're funny and people like to laugh, but you can also put negative feeling images in a blog post. And this is very applicable to many types of businesses. People like to know that you get them that you understand their pain. You can communicate this by using an image of someone feeling a certain way. Don't go too crazy here. I say that a lot. If you get too negative, it's a turnoff. One image will do the trick just fine. Remember, there are a lot of businesses that do exactly what you do, but people make buying decisions based on how they feel. Showing people that you understand how they feel builds trust with them and helps them to remember you. So, was this helpful? Do you feel like you have a better grasp on it? Did you notice that this blog post is completely different from all the other blog posts on this topic? How does it rate for you? I'd love for you to share your thoughts in the comments below. In the meantime, if you found this video helpful, please give it a like. Consider subscribing to my channel. Maybe even share this video with someone who you think could use some help with this. But most of all, have fun with your Squarespace website.